Right. So that's a good question. So um, again, um, it has a relatively high protein diet. So certain uh, populations would have to be careful. It can cause, uh, like you know, in the people who have uh, gout, since it has a rel relatively high protein, it can cause flare-up of gout. And people who have kidney disease or liver disease, uh, it also is not recommended for them as well. So um, there are a few subsets of uh, population which have to be careful to adapt this diet. Um, so I wouldn't recommend, um, you know, somebody who's in advanced kidney disease to go on the ketogenic diet or uh, somebody who has advanced liver disease. And uh, especially if they have a bad gout. I mean, if they have a once in a blue moon uh, gout episode, then they can try it if they are on a medication like allopurinol to prevent uh, flare-up. Um, but they can always try because it's still not super high protein diet. It is super high fat diet. <coughs> so there's some protein, but it's not all protein. So uh, it wouldn't be a big deal if they want to try it. Uh, for gout, gout is just painful, so it's not going to be dangerous. But somebody who have a kidney disease or liver disease, it could be uh, life-threatening. I wouldn't recommend on that kind of situation. For gout patients, they can try it and take their chance, see how it goes. If they get an episode, then they know it's not for them. In essence, it's probably the same. I think that's what you discover. Um, and um, the concept is the same, high-fat diet. And it was you know, designed by Dr. Atkins, so obviously the name comes after that. But I, I think the ketogenic diet is, in essence, has uh, uh, same recipes and same formula. So it's kind of like the same. I think both are very close, similar, similar concept. Good question. Great. Yes, ma'am. Diabetes by itself can cause uh, ketoacidosis, but that only happens if you don't take insulin. So uh, when the blood sugar goes very high, I'm, this is not even talking about ketogenic diet. This is just like how, uh, how does the keto, keto, ketosis happens in people who have diabetes. So first we have to know how it happens so we can prevent it. So uh, when your sugar gets very high, um, body starts to produce ketones in diabetes because the insulin is not there. So insulin is required to keep the ketones on the lower side. So uh, it can cause a lot of acidity and it can cause, uh, pe people can uh, go into coma and they can even die from that. So that's the, um, that's how diabetics get uh, ketosis. But that is not the same thing as we were trying to get here. Um, so People who are diabetic, obviously, they have to watch the carbohydrates. Since it's low carbohydrate, right? So it's, it's perfect for them, actually, because they are using less carbohydrate, more protein, and fat. So the insulin needs are going to be less, you know. So as long as they watch the sh blood sugar uh, and adjust insulin accordingly, they should be okay. So it's, it's recommended for uh, patients who are di diabetics, actually. <coughs> Uh, ketosis happens only on type 1 diabetes. does not happen on type 2, so we should be okay. Unless you're on metformin, uh, metformin causes acidosis, but that's not keto ketoacidosis. That is lactic acidosis, different kind of acidity. But again, um, yes, if you're not on insulin, if you're somebody's type 2, um, that's not a concern at all. So ketoacidosis is only a complication of type 1 diabetes, not type 2. Only if you're taking insulin. Is there any pamphlets or brochures about what you can and shouldn't eat this diet? Uh, there's a lot of uh, resources on the website, uh, on like all over on the internet. I mean, we can put some links to our website too on the weight loss. I mean, we have a, um, we can link some uh, resources. But um, again, the, the whole idea is the freedom. So we don't have to follow a particular diet. I know some people want to cook and they just want to follow the instructions. Uh, that is a, available widely in the books and online. Uh, but we can also arrange, I mean, we can find the kind of some very common diets which are ketogenic. And we can link in our uh, useful links on our website. Uh, so, we'll, uh, Or we can print out and hand out to the patients in the weight loss sessions when we do that. 
Ren, I saw this make a point of that. That's a good one. Yes. Good suggestion. Right. So um, that's a good uh, question. Uh, so the studies have shown that actually the cholesterol drops. Uh, it doesn't go up. I mean, although we think it goes high, but it drops. Uh, and the reason is that you're actually losing weight and your con calorie consumption is getting less. So what we did, we just trick tricked our body to go into a, a different mode of metabolism. So overall, over a long period of time, you're not eating more fat than it seems like we're recommending high fat diet, but uh, if you follow the protocol of ketogenic diet, you will lose weight and uh, your insulin will be less uh, because you're eating less carbohydrates. So if you have less insulin in the body, your your cholesterol start to drop and uh, it, it's get better, especially the triglycerides. So, uh, but it takes time for those um, results to show up. Uh, initially, it will be high, obviously, if you check your cholesterol right away, because you're in the high cholesterol, right? But over a few months, when you're already in the ketogenic phase, it would be uh, it would be normalized, and uh, because your calorie intake would be less, your, your weight has dropped, so you're overall getting healthy anyway. I mean, most patients, I, I, I think they, they can't sustain it, because it's kind of like uh, not very common to over, I mean, what we eat around us, so uh, that's why they have cyclic uh, ketogenic diet too, so you can do five days ketogenic diet, two days regular diet, or or, or episodic, you know, like targeted uh, ketogenic diet based on uh, everybody's need. Uh, standard ketogenic diet is like Monday to Sunday, uh, or you can stop doing it when you come close to your target weight and go back to kind of like a regular diet. So it is, oh, again, the point is, like, it is not forever. It is kind of like, uh, you know, to lose weight. And once you get to uh, your normal weight, you can go back to your normal diet. And at that point, the high-fat high, high fat diet would not be a concern. It is just getting you from above the hump. I mean, this is not uh, lifestyle. This is getting to the fast-forward weight loss program. Good question again. I like the question. My God, you guys got all get ready. Uh, she had a question. She'd been trying to ask questions. So, Thank you. I think you kind of answered it. I have a friend that went on this uh, ketogenic diet for several months. She lost a ton of weight. And she was in no way obese or really even overweight. And she said she plans to continue doing that. So it sounds like she's making that her lifestyle. But you know, that's what I was going to ask. Um, should you incorporate other things? I mean, now you're not eating any fruits. Right. Food. So, so, and if you look at all the blogs or all the topics and books and Keto Kings, you know, there's a, I was looking at, uh, at online last night. They do recommend uh, supplementing the food with electrolytes and uh, vitamins because it is such a kind of like um, super high in fat. And so you're not getting all the fruits and vegetables. So it is recommended highly that you should supplement your food with vitamins. Generally, if we don't recommend it. I mean, most things we eat have. Uh, vitamins and uh, you know minerals in there, but when you're going in such a um, skewed diet, you know like diet which is totally off the hook, then over a long period of time you might get uh, deficient in vitamins and minerals. So the recommendation is there to uh, use the good amount of vitamins and uh, minerals to have a balanced uh, uh, chemistry in the body. Welcome. Good question. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, sir. Yes, so we see in type 2 diabetes is due to insulin resistance. So you have insulin in the body. Your pancreas is the gland uh, which makes insulin. And the difference between type 1 and type 2 is that type 1 uh, patients who have type 1 diabetes, they have no insulin or very less than insulin. In type 2, they have insulin, but they have insulin resistance. So the body does not respond to insulin as well as it would respond to somebody who is not diabetic. And the insulin resistance is due to 
being overweight. So when you start to lose weight, the same insulin become very effective. So you wouldn't need uh, metformin anyway. So, and we do it all the time. I mean, uh, people who are familiar with our program, uh, as we, as patients lose weight, we keep changing their medication every single time. I mean, I have, we have one patient today, she was feeling dizzy, she lost like 15, 10 or 15 pounds, and blood pressure was on the low side, she has been on blood pressure medication, so we, we stopped that medication. So, if same thing happened with diabetes, I have uh, quite a bit of patients which have, were on a lot of diabetic medications, and they're totally cured. You can actually cure type 2 diabetes because literally you have insulin, you just have too much resistance. So if you take away the weight away, then your insulin will work properly and you wouldn't need any diabetic medication. So yes, you can cure type 2 by losing weight and you would not need metformin. So what we recommend is that uh, although I know in type 1 uh, uh, patients generally tend to check the blood sugar once in the day in the day and sometimes when we are adjusting insulin we ask them to check more you know more often in, and uh, and since we're doing so frequent follow-ups uh, rarely that happens that we miss it um, patients generally tell them hey I checked my blood sugar it was in the 70s so then we go on the medication and try to reduce it, reduce it step by step every week. We keep reducing it as long as they keep losing weight. If they don't lose weight, obviously you have to stop and wait till it, it drops more. So answer to your question would be uh, if you want to be more careful, you can check it. I mean, if you want to check it every before every meal, that's fine also. I mean, it wouldn't hurt you. Well, it will hurt you because you're sticking your finger. But, <laughs> but I think it would uh, be more safe, I guess. Again, this is all like very scientific stuff. I mean, we are doing uh, weight loss as a medical weight loss. So it is more, and in the, in the population we are dealing with have a lot of medical conditions. So we are a little bit more aggressive in monitoring these things um, because things happen. I have, I remember one patient we had it and uh, she was very overweight and she had no other medical conditions. And she lost so much weight that she, uh, passed out actually and she fell and uh, broke her ankle and had had a surgery done. I'm like, well, that, well I didn't see that coming. So, um, so these are the real things. I mean, these are the real things and, and a lot of patients, as I said, we have in our uh, practice, they do have a lot of those comorbid conditions and it's absolutely important to reduce medication, which is the whole idea anyway. I mean, you want to lose weight obviously to for healthy reasons, but also to get rid of medications because those medications do have a lot of side effects and they cost you money too. So uh, if we can produce a medication, why not? That's, uh, that's actually the uh, another reward of weight loss, get rid of medications. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, you're right. And there's a role of, uh, you know, in smoking cessation and uh, in a weight loss, there's a role of hypnosis. So we looked into that earlier in the days uh, to bring somebody aboard like that. Uh, so there are actually trained psychiatrists uh, 